where the dipole, remember, you see the dipole was pointing there, the electric fields go in the direction of the dipole, and then the fields are still in the direction of the So, what we now want to know is what's the flux of energy that's supporting that. One go to the large E cross V. And that, well, we just need to plug that in. No E in theta direction, E in phi direction. So obviously radiation just goes straight away from the dipole in the R direction. There we go. And we just multiply the coefficients here. So that gives us one mu naught cancels out. We have the one mu naught p naught squared omega to the fourth power over 16 c sine square theta over r squared cosine squared of t naught, and that goes in the other direction. Right? Okay, so that means, first of all, it's what we expect. So that is the point in flux was only in radiating electric magnetic fields. <coughs> you see it drops off as 1 over r squared as we wanted. So that if you go to large radius <coughs> multiply with 1 r squared, it's something constant. It just carries energy away. Also, we see the sine square theta dependence here, right? It means if we are sitting say, right above or right below the antenna, and theta is zero, or 180 degrees, what's the sine of zero? That means if the dipole is oscillating right towards me, you don't see any radiation coming up at all. Also, the radiation comes out when the sine theta is 1. That is 90 degrees. So you can symbolize that with this radial characteristic that all of it comes out in the radial direction. None of the radiation comes out along the axis. And it's actually well, this is kind of torus. So type will oscillate, all of it comes out. In this direction, nothing comes out across many directions. So, you can also see something important here as an extreme dependence on the frequency. So, it goes as the fourth order of the frequency. You can have one application of this. So, what actually so causes, so if you look out at the night sky, uh, the day, day, night sky, the sky is dark. Why is it not dark during the day? What happens is that some light comes in and is somehow scattered off the molecules. So that's why the sky is not perfectly dark during the day. That's in fact really what's, what is happening. So you can say we are sitting, this is the surface of the earth here, right? And there's some, some atmosphere above it. So there's atmosphere, there's air, and sunlight. You can see the sun is orange here. The sun is here, sunlight comes in. Sunlight, what does the sunlight do? Sunlight has electric and magnetic fields. That happens here. And so molecules, maybe little dipoles, and atomic nuclei, and electrons. So what happens is that electrons suddenly start oscillating in this way, this way, and so on. First of all, there's all kinds of frequencies of light, but sun, sunlight. It's composed of like all the way from red to blue throughout the whole rainbow. But you see this omega to the fourth there. The higher the frequency, the more intense 
whatever oscillates your radio. What is the highest frequency in the visible light spectrum? What color is that correspond to? Violet. Violet is red. Low frequency, long wavelength is red. Goes all the way to blue and then violet to the high frequency sugar. Just because the high frequencies are re radiated so much more intensely, that's the reason why what you see coming down here and radiating again puts pink. Because there's also red eye, there's also oscillating oscillations at much lower frequencies, but they are much less intense. It's the blue that really overwhelms everything, that's why the sky is blue. And also, in what direction? Will you see the fields oscillate from the sky? Is the light the colored polarized? Mostly light <coughs> comes towards you, electric fields are kind of going in, in random directions. It's not, it does not have a preferred direction, it's not polarized. If the light has a preferred direction in which the electric fields are oscillating, how that will polarize the light. Now think about you see a dipole oscillating, the electric fields will always oscillate in this direction. In what direction it will happen in the sky, the sun is there. In what direction will you see the dipoles oscillate? Some light comes from there, it will have oscillations this way or this way, right? Which dipoles will you see radiate? The ones oscillating this way or the ones oscillating this way? Which ones do I see? Only, only these, right? Ones that are oscillating towards me. So you see this, you go. Nothing else. So you only see the ones oscillating in this direction. So you'll see the blue light actually. It's difficult to, to draw here, polarized in the plane of the of the ball, really, into the plane, the manipulated plane of the water. So you see the sunlight uh, polarized perpendicular to the direction towards the sun. When you see oscillations this way, so the electric fields will oscillate the sun. Good. Now, next step. This gives us a, a directional dependence. First thing, I mean, what is the typical frequency, say, of visible light? We actually see things oscillate there, becoming brighter and bigger as this oscillates here with this frequency. Anybody know what the frequency of, of visible light is? About some like a couple of times to 14 hertz or so, right? So you see about 100 trillion oscillations every second. Obviously, you don't resolve that. What you really see is some kind of time average here, yeah, right? Which you can say if you integrate that over one, one period, integral zero to t s of t t. What is that for the cosine square? What is the cosine square if you take the time average? Cosine square, of course, Starts out with one here, right? Plus here, plus and just like that, right? Cosine square of omega t t. What's the average of that? One half, right? We take the average cosine square. So let's say integral zero to i.
the output question. Okay, next step finally, calculate what is the total power that is radiated. So if we total power average over time is integrating oh, this is R squared. So integrate over all the time here. Field 
oscillating. So this, this oscillates back and forth here. That means you will have a here to oscillate up and down. So the analog to the electric fields, the electric charges oscillating up and down. Now we have to make the fields oscillating up and down here. From that, you can calculate the magnetic moment here, right? Anybody remember how you calculate the magnetic moment of the current encircling some radius, circle of radius B?
but it's it's essentially all the same. All the same. And you'll get the same expression then for the pointing for the pointing flux here, where this goes towards the not squared. Total power, then also gets So it's all very much analogous, that's why we can make a chance to open that. And one of the homework problems actually shows you then that with all you can do that if you have any kind of oscillating charges, because any oscillating charge in a sense constitutes a current also with the magnetic dipole. But it's actually because of this C on the C squared dependence here, the extra things you see there that are usually much larger than any velocities that are associated with the motion. That typically the magnetic field whether that power in the magnetic dipole over the power in the electric dipole much less than So in any realistic situation where you have charges and currents oscillating, you'll always find that the electric dipole is way more efficient in radiating than in the electric dipole is. And actually one of the homework problems is calculating that specifically. Good. Does that all make sense? Any questions? Um, when we cancel out all the terms that have 1 over r squared, mm -hmm. do we have to um, show it's 1 over r squared or can we just write so in a test or the home of here, for example, just write because it's going to be 1 over r squared, we pick the term out? Uh, yes, right. If you make the arguments that this will end up as 1 over r squared, then that's fine. And you don't have to explicitly write the whole one. I haven't done anything. Okay, so then, as I said, Tomorrow and Wednesday morning, I will still be here, uh, flying out to Germany actually on Wednesday, I'll be back on Sunday morning. So if you want an extra day for your homework assignments, I will pick them up from my office on Sunday. So if you have to drop them by on, on Saturday, that's fine too. If there are questions, the first of all, you know, next week is our first midterm exam. So that you have some idea of the kind of questions I'm asking, I have here last year's uh, first midterm exam. I have copies for everybody here, so please feel free to pick one up if you like. So that gives you some idea. If you have questions about that, as I said, I'll be here tomorrow and Wednesday. But I'll, I'll also be in email contact, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Any questions? I will see you in the exam. Yeah. Uh, is um, one day's midterm about everything we've done up until today? Up until today.